Welcome or welcome back to Watch Advisor on YouTube. It's Alexander speaking, your host. And on your screen, you see the IWC Schaffhausen Pilot's Watch Time Zoner Edition, Le Petit Prince. Subscribe and hit the bell to get our latest notifications. Fasten your seatbelt for something new. We offer you the chance to win a priceless experience. New subscribers with an activated notification can win a watch manufacturer trip to Switzerland. Together with our partner Fontobel, we give away 10 all-inclusive trips worth a total of 50,000 Swiss francs. More details on watchadvisor.com. Furthermore, register there to double your chances to win. See you soon in Switzerland. It was a request coming from you guys and it is my big pleasure to show you the IWC Time Zoner watch together in a limited edition being presented in a limited edition as a Petit Prince watch or Petit Prince edition. So it is a 46 millimeter stainless steel case with a midnight blue dial and a city ring made of blue ceramic as well as white luminous coated numerals and hands. So a big watch, 46 millimeter, but a very usable and very practical watch for traveling. But if you now expect the watch to be a typical UTC or GMT watch, no, I will have to disappoint you. This is a system that works and functions totally differently, uh, total differently, and you will just see it when I present you um, details how this city ring is operated and what happens if you operate the city ring. Before going into details and uh, showing you the functionality of the city ring and how you are displaying different uh, zone times with the watch, let me just um, present you the watch. So I said it before, the diameter of the case is 46 millimeter and you can already see this on your screens. It is a thick watch um, and has a thickness or height of uh, 15.2. 15.2 millimeter you can see uh, with the uh, fat basil on it yeah it adds some heat um, yep that's how it is but okay let me give you the lug to lug distance 55 millimeter 55 so I would say nice proportion yes considering the fact this is already a 46 millimeter um, diameter watch and yeah but I have to say and have to admit my wrist is 17 centimeters it fitted well on my wrist I can't complain so um, even if it is yeah it is a big watch it is a thick watch still looks nice and yes it's a statement it's a pilot's watch it's the typical ILWC pilot's watch with the huge crown this is the typical crown that the IWC pilots watches have. Uh, the good thing is um, with my gloves when I handle it it's perfectly. <laughs> As you, uh, there, there are very few crowns um, that say uh, you touch it you have grip due to the surface structure uh, you have perfect grip and so it's really good to handle with gloves but I think this was a little bit the intention at the time being when they did those pilots watches for pilots because they were wearing gloves and they should be able to handle yeah their watches also with their equipment including gloves so from this side um that's the watch again the thickness 15.2 millimeter um, you have a blue uh, ceramic inlay in the basil with that city ring. Um, depending on uh, the light that falls 
on that midnight blue uh, dial with a sunburst effect, you get different blue shades, I have to say. So there is rarely a tone in tone to see depending on the light. Mostly I have been discovering when filming the watch that the color of the blue of the basil is a little bit lighter than the blue of the dial. But this, as I told you, depends very much on the fact what light falls on the dial and how much of it is reflected, etc, etc. But I have to admit the blue of the basil is a little bit lighter, but I have seen this before on other watches too, including uh, my Omega Snoopy Speedmaster. Uh, there is the same effect that the basil, the blue is a little bit different too, but that's how it is. That's ceramic and uh, the ceramic is reflecting the light in a different way. In between the lugs, you have 22 millimeter, beautiful leather strap tapering. You can see it here. It does, it is a typical, yeah, uh, leather strap IWC always has when, or, or puts on the watches when they are pilot's watches. You see the folding clasp, the two loops, a uh, nice uh, white stitching on it. And there you go, and you can see 22 in between the locks, and yeah, and then it's tapering. And yep, let me also turn it around and come back into your screen. There we are. That's from the from underneath. First view we have on the in-house movement, IWC in-house movement 82760, an automatic movement. I will give you some more details just in a moment. I will just finish my little, um, yeah, um, left to right, right to left, um, showing you the watch from the backside. Um, See-through case, you saw that already. Um, the case is, the case is 60 meter waterproof, six zero meter. Um, and has a glass that is secured against displacement by drops in air pressure. This is uh, useful when you are in a pressurized cabin and you have an all of a sudden uh, loss of that pressurization in the cabin and then that glass is especially secured against uh, falling out or being sucked out literally. This is what always is being done um, or what IWC always provides with its pilot's watches. And what you see here, you see that? I told you, different colors coming either um, depending on the light that falls on the dial and on the ceramic inlay. And you see it looks uh, like a light blue from this angle and the dial look uh, looks like it will be a dark blue and look if I turn around you see what happens depending on uh, yeah I have to play around a little bit you see if I put enough light then I have, of course you have the reflections from my lights here on uh, the uh, ceramic uh, ring but uh, you see the dial now looks much um, more is more a light blue and if I turn again you see it gets dark, you see now, that's dark, and the, and the ceramic inlay looks uh, yeah, like a uh, light blue. So, fantastic way of playing around, you could do that all day long, <laughs> uh, discovering all different shades um, of, um, yeah, the two blues either coming from the dial, a uh, sunburst dial or the ceramic inlay of the basil. And once again, I wanted to show you that uh, watch from the side if you get that angle. Um, the sapphire crystal have has a anti-reflective treatment on both sides, on, on the front side, and has a anti-reflective treatment on the inner side, uh, on this side, on the side where the movement is.
showing you this uh, movement uh, with the camera caused uh, the camera some headaches. Um, the surface treatment is a uh, pretty bright and uh, yeah with the reflections uh, coming back from the light falling on the movement the camera had some headaches so I'm really trying my best now to show you um, the uh, IWC manufactured 82760 Calibre. It's a, an automatic movement as I just said it features a bi-directional peloton winding system enhanced with components made of uh, virtually uh, wear-free zirconium oxide ceramic and it has a 60 hour power reserve so and uh, yep some of you already of course saw it here is the little prince Le Petit Prince it is a Saint-Exupéry um, limited edition, this is number 79 out of 1500 I'm holding here in my hands and you have you see the medallion here, this is 18 karat gold, the rotor is not made out of gold but this, the Petit Prince, the Little Prince is a gold medallion being integrated in the winding rotor. Yep, that's uh, the movement you see from um, another angle. Now you can nicely see it. I, I told you it's difficult um, uh, with the yeah the camera. <laughs> um, did have some unexpected headaches. Um, yeah, with that uh, movement, I don't know why, but I think it is due to that bright uh, surface finishing. Um, uh, of the color of the surfaces of the bridges uh, and the rotor that caused the camera to think too much and sometimes if the camera thinks too much it delivers uh, yeah, some pictures that are not absolutely accurate but I think this should be it when you look now this is it yeah I will now uh, make a free 60 turn uh, of that watch that by the way has a weight of 148 uh, grams so you can see the watch in front I'm turning it you're seeing that's dot the dark brown um, leather strap nicely done with the white stitching nice type of uh, yeah pilot's watch um, yeah, pilot's watch, leather strap, and here we are back. And next is going to be, um, I will show you the function of the time zoner, as the watch is called, the time zoner function, and what is different to a normal or a UTC GMT watch as we do know them. First of all, uh, you have a yeah inlay in the basal in ceramic, and as you see. I uh, positioned it, that's Paris, the time zone of Paris and the left of it there is another position and this position indicates daylight saving time. So this would be uh, yeah, standard time and this is daylight saving time in Paris. So the watch is now set and uh, what you can do if you want to use the watch when traveling is first of all the crown is screwed down, yes you go in uh, the first position then you pull out and then the second hand stops it has a second stop and what now you are doing is presetting the watch I'm just showing you this and you will now already clearly see that the 24 hour indication here is linked to what you see with the hour and the minute hand so this is two o'clock 1400 or two o'clock and if I continue to turn you will see we are approaching 4 p.m. or 1600 etc etc and now let's go back to my presetting that the watch smiles at you 10 o'clock in the morning we're going just back to that presetting and let's assume this will be our local time uh, we have been, uh, we got our time signal, we were starting the watch, you see that the central second starts again, um, swiping over the dial in uh, 
one eighth of a second. It is a movement with 28800 semi oscillations, four hertz. So, and now let's assume we are traveling um, to New York. To make it a little bit more easy, what you do is you are pressing. You see here? I'm pressing. And once you do this, um, you will be able to um, set the new time where you are landing or getting to. So now I'm turning back. Now we are UTC. And UTC clearly is two hours, there are two hours of difference to summertime Paris or the time zone of Paris. UTC, you see the red marking here, UTC. So this will be UTC time. And you also see that the 24 hour ring did follow what I have been setting here. So eight o'clock, eight o'clock. And now we're going back to New York. The only thing we have to do is to find New York. We are now in Rio de Janeiro. We get to New York summertime. Yes, actually is daylight saving time or summertime in New York. This will be New York without. And this is New York with. So we have again a little white dot just left of New York. And you see six hours of difference. It's four in the morning. It was 10 in the morning in, uh, in uh, Europe, Paris time zone. And now we have four o'clock in the morning in uh, New York, six hours of time difference. So this is how you operate the watch. And this is the functionality of that time zoner, or that's the time zoner functionality. You have a basal, the watch does not stop. You don't, you didn't see the central second hand uh, stopping. And it's very usable if you are a pilot and you are traveling from one time zone to the other and you need to do some quick adjustments by going through different uh, time zones um, and you need to adjust the zone time. So now I can uh, forward again and we come back to UTC, 8 o'clock. Let's go back to Paris, 10 o'clock, and now um, let's, for instance, uh, go to Bangkok or Tokyo. And what happens? We are advancing. We are now in Dhaka. We are now in Bangkok. Uh, Beijing. And there we come to Tokyo. That's very easy. That's all you have to do. Um, the watch continues, continues to tick, so you are not losing the time. And you clearly see now Tokyo is five o'clock in the evening. And yeah, we can continue our little uh, trip around the world. Uh, for instance, going to Auckland. Here is Auckland. Auckland without daylight saving time. Auckland with daylight saving time, etc., etc. And this is how you use the watch. And what happens now is, yeah, we are coming close to the date change. And yeah, the date is, of course, also linked to, and that, look, can you see the date window? The 28 is now slightly moving out of its um, little window. And you see when I'm going over the day, over the day zone, um, yeah, 29th. That's how the watch works um, and if you want to go back let's go back of course the date will also go back we have the 28 again and if i'm going back to europe the only thing you do i will come back here i'm back in paris with uh, yeah daylight saving time 10 o'clock and this is how the watch um, is operated uh, when being used as a watch for traveling. Let me um, again show you this little few millimeters um, uh, when you are pushing on the basal. Look, there you go. It's only a little bit. I hope you can, I think one should be able to see that now. See, when I push, and by pushing, you are getting, you are enabled to turn the basal. If you don't push, of course, it is fixed. You can't turn it. And yeah, the best is to use two fingers and to turn. Um, yeah, but this is not probably the either way of showing you it in the camera because I would cover everything like now. So I'm trying it uh, with my, uh, yeah, in this, um, from this um, angle. 
and uh, yeah look this you press you can see it and then you are able to turn a clever time function or a zone time function for traveling so i can show it also from the top maybe i uh, maybe we will see it trying to get an angle without reflections and then i push and you turn that's what you do um to set the yeah next zone time Ideal watch if you're traveling um, and you want to do a quick adjustment, probably not an ideal watch if you are keen to have uh, your home time indication. There is no home time indication unless you are putting, yeah, you're turning back to Paris, wherever you are on the world. And if you want to know what time it is at home, if you aren't, if you are not aware, so you just have to push the push down the basil and turn it back to Paris. That's what you can do. But there is no Simon. Uh, there is no possibility to show both either home time and the local time. That's not something the watch is able to do. I would say that uh, time zoner function is really uh, meant to be. Um, used or uh, makes much sense if a pilot uses it because imagine just the fact um, uh, as uh, I am showing it to you right now we are uh, supposing to be in a cockpit on a flight deck of, a, of, of an airplane uh, taking off from Europe so you have Paris and once you are in the air everybody who is uh, um, who knows about flying and uh, operating a plane knows that uh, worldwide everything is operated in UTC or GMT. So what the pilot then would do is once the aircraft took off, he would probably set um, the basal to UTC. Um, he would have always indicated UTC on the dial. This is what he needs. And once uh, he lands, wherever he goes, east or west, the adjustment can easily be done once again uh, back going to New York. You just go and you either decide, you decide New York daylight saving. No, this is not daylight saving because it's seven hours and you have the little white dot just beside um, New York here. There's a dot and you just go there and you have New York time. It's so easy to handle and so easy uh, to be used uh, in the end. Uh, if you really need such a function, if you need it, that's uh, what we have to say. Are you interested in the Swiss watch industry? Check out Fontobel's latest Swiss watch industry outlook on fontobel.com slash watches. I always like to show how the date change um, happens on a such a watch. So what will happen if uh, we are um, arriving at midnight? You can already see we are at eight o'clock. Here, the 24-hour uh, indication tells us uh, 8 o'clock and then we are arriving. No, of course, there's no instantaneous uh, jump here. Um, you already saw it when I was pushing down the basal and turning over the date change. You see, it starts around uh, 11.30. And yeah, when we arrive at... Yeah. It's not an instantaneous date change. You can also go back, of course, if you want, and you will see, I will do it again. So we are changing the date and yeah, it takes about an hour to change the date. But this is how it is. Um, very useful function, I have to say. Um, if you are um, traveling a lot and still, and very important is that, um, of course, the I've been putting Paris 10 o'clock in the evening now to make a little change to before. Um, very useful and of course logical to um, uh, a, such a watch is that the watch does not stop when you make any manipulations on the basal and you're changing the time zone. That would be absolutely yeah, weird. You have a precision instrument showing you the right time and it would stop. No. So let's see here, for instance, you see. I can turn and you see clearly the seconds continue to run. Voila. Next is the loom shot. Uh, what you are going to see is lots of uh, yeah illumination coming from the dial, from the dots, from the triangle, the hands, etc. But there is no 
Um, Super Luminova being applied here. That will be a fun part of a watch, uh, maybe in a version 2.0 IWC. And uh, could think about applying some Super Luminova here and to make the entire basil yeah, visible when it is dark. Thank you very much for watching this uh, yeah, review hands-on uh, video uh, with the Pilot's Watch Time Zoner Edition Le Petit Prince. It is, as I said, a limited edition to uh, 1,500 pieces. And funny enough, <laughs> funny enough, 1,500 pieces and the price, including 19% VAT in Euro, is 15,000 Euro. So 1,500 pieces. 15,000 euro uh, price in euro, including 19% VAT in Germany. So if you want the net price, you have to deduct the 19%. Let me know what you think about the watch. Is that time zoner function useful? Would you know how to use it? Where to use it? Would you use it? I'm curious to know. For me, um, I have to say it's very much uh, linked to pilots, I would say, or uh, yeah, if you're traveling and you want an easy way of changing your time zones, that's probably the best way of doing it, pushing, turning, uh, you don't have to think, you don't have to unscrew a crown, nothing, you just push and turn and it's done. Um, but I'm keen uh, to get your opinion, of course, if you have questions concerning the watch, let me know and yeah, um, let us discuss in the comment section. Bye-bye for now. Thanks for watching the video. Um, and yes, stay tuned on Watch Advisor and YouTube. Of course, there's much more coming. And thanks again um, for, yeah, um, asking me to uh, make this video. That was a request coming from you guys that I should uh, present you the Time Zoner Watch Le Petit Prince. And there it is and was. Bye-bye. Hey. Have you packed your luggage? If not, do so. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell. You will get the chance to win your exclusive trip to Switzerland.